being recorded. Good evening, good evening, and welcome back to the Let's Talk Destiny talk show. I am your host, Jamie Green, and I welcome you to a time of just coming to a place where we can sit and understand and talk from the heart. This month is um, designated as Black History Month, and I want to focus on the power and the purpose of Black love. Far too many people are devaluing this um, awesome force and minimizing the importance of it and just misunderstanding the power that lies in it. And so tonight I am beyond thrilled to have one of my sister friends and fellow sister writers, author Cheryl Lister. Cheryl hey. is an award-winning author who writes sweet, sensual, contemporary romance. Her novels feature multifaceted, intelligent, strong <clears throat> women and men who are slightly flawed heroes and heroines. Away from writing, she spends her time whipping up delicious meals as she satisfies her inner foodie. And tonight, I want to welcome to the platform my sister friend, author Cheryl Lister. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for having me on here. I appreciate you, my sister, and I appreciate you having this, this important conversation this month. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we get into the conversation, I want you to just tell us a little bit about you and the things that you love aside from cooking. <laughs> what are some of the things that you love to do, things that make you smile? Oh, things that make me smile or hanging out with my family, especially, you know, my real life hero, my hubby. Date nights are like, you know, my specialty. If I don't get one of those where I'm in a bad <laughs> mood, got to have a date night. So, and I like crafting too. So anything from making bath and body stuff to crocheting and whatever wow. else. Yeah, I, I don't have time for either of those, but, you know, but when I'm not writing. And then when I am, when I have a chance, I'm reading a book for pleasure. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm so That's behind. My TBR pile is probably, you know, taking up my entire bedroom because I haven't had a chance to read, but, but I love That's doing true. those kinds of things. Okay. Hanging out, you know, family time is important for me. Absolutely. I love that because far too many um, of us, especially women, we get um, so focused on doing one thing and we, we're, driven to do it right and to do it perfectly and do it you know people have expectations and we get so focused on that that we forget that we have other we're mind body and spirit and so right. we have other parts of us that have to be fed and nourished as well and i love what you said about the date night that is so important when you're in a marriage in a committed relationship you have to feed it just like you feed everything else and so i love 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 that you said that Family, absolutely important. And oh, I forgot. I do. I do do my me time too, though. I don't be playing. I have my me time, whether it's a massage oh, yeah. or my pedicure or, but I will and my hair. It's my me time, and I'll take yeah, myself to lunch with a book and read for pleasure for at least exactly. an hour. You know, yeah. I remember I would be sitting in restaurants with a book, <laughs> and I would look around, and some people would be staring at me. <laughs> And the look would be kind of like, oh, poor thing. It's like, <laughs> no. Find anybody like, no, no. This is a choice right here. Happy. This yeah. is a choice, sweetheart. This is a choice. I have to tell I you, though, it wasn't solution. always like that because I was that trying to do it all, trying to do it all. The, the kids were younger, you know, trying to make sure dinner, this, you know, doing all the, the yeah. mom and wife things. And my husband was the one who pushed me out of the door one day. I mean, early on when our kids were all young, you know, and he yeah. said, you need to go take yourself to lunch. Take one of your books. Don't come back for two hours. I'm like, two hours? What am I going to oh. do away from home two for two hours? I can't just be gone. You can't sit in the restaurant and read your read a book. He said, yes, you can. Grab one off the shelf. Don't come back for two hours. And that's he shouldn't have never done that because now once a month from, <laughs> it's probably been, yeah. probably been almost 20 years that I've, that he pushed me out that door and said, you need to wow. do some me time. And now he's like, where are you going? Me time. <laughs> yeah. I love, and I love it. I love it. Even, um, you know, I have family members that, you know, call sometime and they're like, oh, and Jamie, I came by or I called you didn't answer. And I was like, I was taking my me time. I didn't feel like talking. I, you mm -hmm. know, I'll call you back as soon as I'm available, whatever, exactly. but you have to do that. You have to. You have to. 
You and do. it makes you be the, uh, of the best version of yourself for everybody else. When you're it the really best does. Of it really does. Because I was running myself mm -hmm. ragged, trying to do all of those, those things. And, you know, you're tired, you're, you're, you get a little overwhelmed and whatever. And mm -hmm. he's like, Oh, bye. Don't do, you need to do some me time. Because he'll say, I do it all the time. Because he would, he didn't have no hesitation about taking himself to breakfast with the newspaper <laughs> or, or the Bible yes. or something. Yeah. So it, 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 it was really cool. But I also, you know, I guess my, my other preferred time, like I said, or with him, whether we just going to go get some apple yeah. pie, like sharing apple pie a la mode and hot chocolate or a full on dinner or snacks or whatever in between, oh. or just going to the park and sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> That's sweet. I love that. I love that. Wow. Okay, so let me ask you this, Cheryl. Um, mm -hmm. You are gifted. Like some people can write and some people, you know, it's kind of interesting uh, when you read what they write. But there are people who are divinely gifted to do this thing. And you are one of those uh, women who has been gifted to write about the intrinsic uh, power in love. Like I think it's a word that people use so much that it's lost um, the real meaning. Like you say, I love you. You say, I love you to the mailman. You love the man at the grocery store. You just love mm -hmm. But when we think about how love can literally change a life, save right. a life, right. heal a broken heart, all of that, I think we need to get back to really understanding the power of love. And that's what I get out of your books. Oh, um, I appreciate that. that. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I get a lot of books. Like, I read, I love, reading is what I do. I love to read. Um, I probably do more reading than what I should be because there's some other things I should be doing when that's I'm okay, somewhere girl, reading. Reading is good for you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the things I get from your books. Is there's a story in there and I have to dig for it and I have to pay attention um, and I feel every bit of it. My question is, how did you decide that this is the genre that you wanted to write? You know, honestly, I have to say that I, I feel like the genre chose me long before I knew it was going to choose me. Wow. Because I, I, I've always loved to read. I, I was the kid in school who, when they said the first 15 minutes of class is reading, I'm like, yes. Can we do make it 30? You know, so I yeah. was that person. And I, you know, when I got a chance to write a story, my first story I wrote when I was 12 years old, seventh grade, almost got me kicked out of school because my teacher thought I plagiarized it. And, and it's funny that when I go back and think about that story, that story would be categorized as a YA romance, as a young adult romance, because they were like 20, 19, 20 years old, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, so we doing that, huh? So, but then, you know, and I always loved and wanted to write and, but I didn't have, they didn't, there were no books with folks who look like me. Yeah. And then yeah. we start seeing uh, those arabesque and, you know, the, what is it? Kensington had there in Pinnacle right, right, way right. back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I felt like I found the Holy Grail, you know, black romance. Oh my gosh. You know, yeah. and so the very first book I think I read was Francis Ray's um, Incognito because it was a movie on BET, Arabesque. Okay. And I was like, wait, what? There's Black romance? <laughs> Hold on a second. Right. Goes okay. to, you know, the library, goes, you know, searching because, you know, we didn't have internet right there, back then. I went on a binge and started buying all these books and started reading. I was telling my mom stories. Oh, I want to write. Oh, I want to write romance. Oh, I do this, 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 and this. And she's like, well, for 20 years, by the way, it took me 20 <laughs> years to actually wow. do it. But I think the timing was perfect for when I actually did it okay. because I had more things to, to dig from, more experiences about the Black romance, about what Black romance was than if I'd written it 20 years prior. Right, right. I so I think it chose me when I wrote that first little story that almost got me wow. kicked out of school. <laughs> Going back thinking about it, I'm like, oh, so romance is what you really want to write. <laughs> wow, so. that's powerful. That's powerful. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I am a firm believer in divine destiny. Um, um, my format for this show, I always want it to be purpose driven because mm -hmm. I want people to um, understand that each of us has a purpose. 
for yeah. being you. And when the when you find your purpose, you recognize it, you acknowledge it, and you start living it, your life goes to a whole different dimension. And so I think that's powerful um, that you saw it early and it plagued you all along until you paid attention. Yeah. And <laughs> well, yeah, it, it was it was it was a hard thing because, like I said, you know, life. You, you, you graduate from school, you go to college, you start having things, you know, you have family issues, you know, things happen, you go with them, you get married, you start having kids, you know, you know, and then, I mean, and I can't say that because I love my first career too, because I was a pediatric occupational therapist for over 20 years. So I played for, I played for a living. I mean, who you get, get any better than that than playing with babies? Come on. You know, so, uh, (laughs) so it's good. But, but like I said, you, you're right about God's divine timing because my first back surgery, was when I wrote my first, wrote, wrote the book that had been in my head all this time for 20 okay. years. And it just, and it, I started it the year before, literally a year before that, when my mom passed away, because I was like, she kept telling me, write the book, write the book. And then when she died, I'm like, okay, you know, life is short. I need to get this book done. Yeah. And so it wasn't until the next year when I had to have back surgery and dug out that backpack with, where I started yeah. writing, I saw this notebook and I'm like, you know what, you need to and so yeah. when, you know, when you have back surgery, you have to lay on your back for a month. Getting up takes 10 minutes. I should have put that notebook someplace else other than my dress. <laughs> right, every time right. I try to get up for 10 minutes, it will be staring at me like, so you're going to finish yeah. me? You're going to finish me? What are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for like three nights straight, when I was feeling a little bit better, but still couldn't get up, I was having dreams of scenes. And I was like, okay, I got it. Finish the book. That book will never see the light of day, but it unlocked all the the creativity, I guess, that God had put yeah. there in the first place. And I just kept going. And it was my fourth book that I wrote that got me to deal with Harlequin. Wow. And, you know, so it, it and I, I always tell people that this journey, this writing journey has been a Jesus special. I'll tell you anywhere it go, because I don't have a lot of the same, I don't know, my, I just call it my Jesus special because he allowed me to go from one career that I love to a second one, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's been, I mean, it doesn't, it, it's not without its challenges, trust me, but yeah. I, I don't think I would change a thing. And when, you know, when you were talking and I had uh, made a note earlier that I wanted to t- ask you about this, because um, I remember from a conversation we had before about your relationship with God and your love for him and your faith and, and what have you. And I think about how the church, um, I don't know about the church you grew up in, but the church I grew up in has so many don'ts, 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 can'ts, 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 uh, no, 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 um, and romance and love and all of that were you know, definitely at the top of the no, no, no category. Um, and so have you, when you first decided to write romance, did you um, get any pushback from the church community with regard to writing about love and romance because and the reason I asked that question is because I remember mentioning one time that I wanted to write a novel um, about this love relationship and a couple of preachers that I knew um, said to me oh no you can't do that because um you know, I think they were thinking about erotica, to tell the truth, mm-hmm. but they didn't know what title, genre they were referring to, because they were like, Christians don't write about, Christians don't read, and I'm like, first of all, I didn't say anything about writing erotica, um, but evidently Christians have sex, because there's a whole bunch of baby <laughs> Christians running around in this church, gotcha. and the Sunday school class exactly. is from somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> but I was just wondering if you ever got any pushback about writing romantic books. No, because I think at the time, the church we were at, we were kind of moving to a different church. And so these folks were the church that we were at. They don't know that I write. But my church in San Jose, where I met my husband and my mother-in-law still goes there, they have a book club, right? And so when my first, when I wrote my first book, she says, oh, the girl, the ladies want to have a, a book chat with you. And I'm like, mom. You do know what kind of book this is, right? 
<laughs> and she's like, yeah, it's good. Too. And they all want, they want you to come. And so, you know, and I live in Sacramento. Wow. So I'm, I, we drove down to San Jose for it. And at the time, this was pretty, I said, oh, okay, that's fine. So where are we having it? She goes, oh, at the church in the social hall. I'm like, at the church, mom? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I got there and I have to tell you, it was one of the best experiences. Those ladies, and wait a minute, the interim that one of the ladies, she's one of the associate ministers, Sister Fanny, she was there. I mean, it was about 20 of those ladies in there. They Aww. had food for me. They, you know, whatever. And they were like, girl, that book had had an old woman fanning that night. <laughs> you know? That's and then wonderful. They asked, and then they yeah. asked me, it was so funny. She said, you know, I was reading it. You know, your books are kind of, you know, they're a little bit steamy, a little bit. Um, so how did you, where do you get, you know, how did you get that? I said, well, you know, Lance is in charge of research and development <laughs> that's my husband so he grew up in that church mind you I I came there by way of LA so I met him there he was already he grew up there yeah, and they funny. were like "Ooh!" and I was sitting next to his mom and I said so I just want to let you know babe that I kind of said I'm texting him so I told the ladies that you were in charge of research and development when it came to my romantic scene <laughs> that is funny that is and then funny. the pastor happened to be there this is a Saturday afternoon and they introduced me to him and he bought the first three books, <laughs> all three books that I had. That is wonderful. So yeah, wow. he said, I said, uh, Pastor Desi, he said, that's all right. He said, oh no, I'm married. I can learn something for my wife. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> now, isn't that sweet? Oh it my was. goodness. So it was just hilarious. So it wasn't, yeah. Because my, the, my, my, my father, I have to tell you, my father-in-law was my first my first fan he read all the drafts of the books that are you know the old the ones that were will never see lights of day kind of thing those first three <laughs> books so yeah. he read all of those drafts and he's all like oh you a good little writer because when I asked him to read it because he reads romance he reads romance mostly historical kind of things yeah. you know but he reads the romance so I said okay dad I want you to read this and That's he's been cool. my biggest fan because every time I go down we go he said you got something new or they come up here you got something new yeah oh. he just whips out his he whips out the money for it he pays for it I'm like no you have this uh -uh. yeah well, so they do sweet. that just made my day thank yeah. you yeah yeah That's yeah That's precious now how many books have you authored so far 31 31 published books so far. Wow. And it probably would have been, you know, around 33 had, you know, life not intervened last year, but you know, that's life is what it is. And so I'm learning to kind of go with the flow because I was frustrated. I'm not even going to lie but about yeah. not, you know, sticking to my schedule, but sometimes it's just like praying. It's like, okay, Lord, I'm going to let me just relax myself and do what I can do in the time that I can get it done. So, but yeah, 31. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I am very happy for you. I need Thank to get you. caught up. I need to get caught up. Um, <laughs> you have I'm to send me a text. Now. You have to send me a, a message and let me know where you stopped at. And I got you, girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That is so precious. Now, I did, again, like I said, I wanted to ask you about the, um, the genre, how you chose that genre. Now, my other question is, what is your goal? for writing in this genre. When people read your books, what is the main thing that you want them to walk away with? That Black love is real, it's beautiful in all its complicated ways, that it is strong and that it's alive and kicking. Because like you said, we have these stereotypes that, that Black love doesn't really exist. And if it does, it's this kind of shell of a thing and then there's so far many times that our black men are not celebrated for the strong, wonderful men that they are. They have the stereotype, oh, black men are not romantic. I'm like, okay, but y'all have a by honey, honey. Because if you read any one of those 31 books, every a lot of those things that the heroes do for their women are things that my husband has done for me. So That's like I said, research and development. So it's just easy. And I, I, I consider myself just so thankful and grateful and just abundantly blessed to be able to write about the love that I get to really live. And so my That's husband would be like, no pressure, I babe. <laughs> like, no pressure, hun. I know. Yeah, <laughs> that is funny. Um, but I, I think it's wonderful because, like I said at the beginning, Black love gets such a negative review from society. Yeah. Um, historically, we've just been, 
it's just been about um, put the black male and the and black female together for procreation reasons so right. that they can make babies and then we can sell them and we have more property and then exactly. we sell them away from each other uh, mm -hmm. so they don't really understand the bond of relationship or family because we weren't allowed to have family. Um, and then, you know, as time went on, even with our grandparents and great grandparents that stayed together, they still were under the uh, misguiding that it was just mainly about the children. They see right. how many children right. we can have so they can help farm this, this land. Exactly. And so, you know, take care. Yeah. And so it's difficult. It has been challenging for us as a people to understand um, relationships and intimacy and how important it is and how good it can be because right, we see right. so many bad examples. And so this is one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. And one of the things I've wanted to talk about this month on the show is that there is the possibility of loving uh, black, having a loving black relationship and it be successful and both people be happy and there's yeah. no abuse and there's no a misuse or none of that. You can just be happy. And that's why I wanted you to come and to remind us of that. Yeah, it, and it it is. And like I said, it's like uh like my parents did, you know, they they split up after, you know, like 25 something, 30 years, whatever. But my in-laws have been married, was it 55, 60 years? Wait a minute. 60 years, I think. 60 years. Cause wow. we went and we took them out last year for their anniversary last year for 60 years. And I watched them and my, my father, like I said, my father-in-law, he, you know, they, he tries to act like I'm going to sell her or whatever, but he's, I watch how he touches her hand. He's helping her yeah. across the street. You know, he's doing all these little bitty things, whatever. And then too, my husband's uh, grandparents, because I saw them more frequently because we were here. And I remember his grandmother saying to me one time when, when they had been married for 55 years, this was early in our marriage. And she said, oh yeah, honey, we've been married for 55 years and he's still my sugar daddy. And she had this little giggle and a switch off and I'm left with my mouth hanging. And I was like, yeah. Nana, goals. <laughs> and that's how, and so exactly, exactly. Those are my goals is to have fun with this. And I think that that's the, the thing that we don't get to see and that that is not shown readily because we're quick to put out there, oh, look what this black man did. He didn't do blah, blah, blah. Look what this black woman did. She didn't do this. But we we don't do the same with celebrating the success, the successful exactly. marriages. We don't do, we don't put that on social media too often. Exactly. We're quick to throw up all that negativity that happens in celebrities and everybody else. But we don't Absolutely. hear about the Absolutely. longevity of marriages that are still going 30, 40, 50 Absolutely. years, you know, down the road, even though they're in, in the spotlight. We skip yeah. all of those things and, and we just focus true. on those. And I, like you said, I think that that is something like you said is, is embedded in the founding of this country because it stems from them, like you said, the, the separation all the time. So mm -hmm. being able to break those chains and, yes. and to come together and just out of the love and not have to worry about, you know, all that other stuff stuff that came That's along wonderful. back then is is it's freeing in a way yeah. and and i and i would i wish that more people would do it because like i said with these when you it, like you said marriage is not for the faint of heart if you're going into it with the whole i'm just trying to be with somody because i'm 35 now and i, I want to be married that's exactly. not that's not gonna help you it's better for you to stay single until yeah. that one person that 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 makes your heart sing yes. you know comes comes your way than to just settle for whatever absolutely and it's i wanted an to have difference. this conversation because i want to change that narrative mm -hmm. like i talk to a lot of young people who say um if they're even talking about getting married they'll say well if it don't work we can always get divorced right. like because you walk into it with that already that seed is already planted so the first time that y'all don't agree on something or you you do things this way and he does it a different, you're ready to walk out the door. You need to understand when you're coming together, you, you're, you, that, I, that whole thing about uh, relationships are a 50-50 thing, that's not it. It's 100-100, 110, 110, all to be. So it has to be 100% you, 100% him. It can't be 50-50 because all you get is two halves or nothing if you, if you do that. You catch, because you're walking into this with the, with the thought of, 
this is who I plan to be with until. Exactly. Like when y'all take those little vows that they say, at till death shall part you. So yeah. if you walking in with this other thought process, then that's not what you, you you're you're committing to this that's when you correct. say I do. Already you have gotta a forget the other B. stuff. Yeah, yeah. you, you can't have you don't need you, you don't walk with Plan B because yeah. Plan B, Plan A through Z is this is who we gonna this is what yeah. we doing from here on out. And and you've got to understand it. that you are two separate people. And and I think like I said for for us that. We, the thing is that we we always say that it's not us, but it's God who lives in us, who does it. Because he, we keep him at the forefront of the marriage. And if we keep him there, then, you know, everything is deferred and viewed through the lens of the scripture for our, yes. for our relationship. So if we're not, it's not a like, well, I was right this time and you was right. You this, this, this. It's like, no, what does the Bible say? Okay, so that means that both of us need to sit down and have a seat somewhere and shut up. You know, so it just makes it easier. But then also we, and neither one of us like arguing. We don't like, that's taking up way too much energy. So it's like, and we, this, we consider our home, our sanctuary. And so we don't want it to be filled up with drama and whatever else. And our kids will tell you that they have, we have spoiled them for my middle daughter. She always says that dad's is messed it up for everybody because she got, she looking for somebody exactly like him and she doesn't think she's going to find it. So she stands single for well, I totally, I totally can understand that because yeah. um, even though I did get married, um, we didn't last like five minutes. But um, I just, oh, every relationship I've ever been in, I, I was like comparing them to my dad. Like, right. They started out doing things that my daddy did. Then I need you to keep doing that. Like exactly. You, you buy, you buying me stuff. You, you giving me stuff that I, you know, I need you to keep doing that. I don't, mm-hmm. I'm trying to hear that. Well, we're not doing that anymore because my daddy didn't stop. Right. <laughs> so the day he died, and I think he we died. don't. And that's the, I think that is like one of the biggest things is that in order for it to work, you need to do the same thing you were doing when you were courting together. And she, same, same thing, because, you know, he'll do stuff for me that, are, and it doesn't have to be this huge, you know, big thing, doesn't have to be expensive, doesn't have to be these fancy dinners. Listen, my husband knows. He just goes and brings me home caramel apple with peanuts. And I'm like dancing on the dancing through the house. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. love my husband, you know, because he knows that a simple, that simple little thing. Is you you bring me a caramel apple with peanuts. Listen, what you want for dinner this week, next week? Yeah. I got well, you. What you, know? you want. Just tell me what you want. <laughs> exactly. I'm make it and so because yeah. I think we we do that, we have a habit of like, you know, like we don't for Valentine's Day, he doesn't buy me flowers. Because I specifically told him, I said, don't you buy me no flowers on Valentine's Day because you can buy those same flowers the day before and the day after for a fourth of the price. But he buys me flowers whenever, just because. So yeah. I don't need to have them on Valentine's Day. Yeah. You know, he leaves me a little cute note. He buys me a little card. I buy him. I'll kidnap him one time. He kidnaps me. Oh, you know, right. we... So we still date and we still are silly. We still dance in the house with the music on or when the music is off. So it's just, yeah, that's powerful. And so yeah. even when you, you know, run into those walls, which every relationship will, um, uh, you sometimes you hit a wall and you like, it, it, something's got to change right here. It, and it's not all him, it's not all me. We got to figure this out together. But it's that love that will keep you saying, listen, I'm not walking mm-hmm. away. We're going to sit down. We're going to figure this thing out because we have too much invested and mm-hmm. because we have too much future ahead of us. And so right. this is what I'm trying to, to share, you know, change the narrative about um, this love, black love thing, because we come from people who um, understand commitment and they right. understood going right. through the hard times right i always exactly. laugh about this and it's not even a black love story but it tickles me i'm a big fan of um little house on the prairie like my sister mm-hmm. always about that and she says i don't understand how you can watch that show they are always going through that something's happening to the house that's they true don't- you're right it is there's always they're not gonna make it <laughs> always <laughs> got some exactly. Somebody's sick and ain't gonna live. Exactly. Somebody laid up there about to die. You're right. I didn't come to think about it. Yeah, I didn't watch it that often. Every time I did, I would see it. That was watching that show, and I said, you know what? 
Charles and Caroline keep me watching that show. Because yeah. no matter how bad times get, how many right. tornadoes come through and tear up the crop, Caroline says, I'm staying, Charles. No matter what, we're going to get through this together. Exactly. And, um, she, so my sister just kind of laughs at me about it. But that's the kind of commitment that I want us to get back to as a people. Right. And it's funny that you said that because my husband and I, we always listen because we love music and the chorus of Luther Vandross, the song, I'd rather, I'd rather have bad times with you than good times with someone else. Yeah. You know, I'd rather, you know, be in a storm with you than, you know, yeah. by my, all by myself when it's all good. Yeah. So not the whole song, but just that chorus yeah. is really what always sticks with us because I'd rather go through whatever life is throwing our way with you than having it oh, all good yeah. with somebody else. So and, and it is. So I he, think is your husband near you right now? No, he left. Because I think you're just trying to get some candy apples or no he's not he's more. not even here. He's not even here. <laughs> but he you know what it, I do I talk about him a lot. I try I'm trying you know, I try to not but because I love, but I love this man so because even because when I go to the bank, I love the credit in the bank, you know, and they know me in there because I come there all the time, and she knows that I write one of the tellers, and I got her, and I guess my husband he said because I told him I talk about you, and I tell people that how much you you know how wonderful I think you are, and he doesn't believe me, so he went to the bank. Uh, I think it was about maybe three or four weeks ago. He says, so I guess you do talk about me because I guess she goes, oh, you're the one that she always writes about and says that her heroes are like in her books. <laughs> oh, that's precious. See? So he, th- I do. I do talk about him. But yeah. That's awesome. Well, before we close out our conversation, I want to ask you if um, there would be some young people, uh, specifically a young woman maybe that will watch this video who's struggling to really believe that it's possible to fall in love and be in a committed relationship and go through the storms and still come out happy. What is some advice that you would give our young people today who are struggling with the black love relationships? Oh, that's tough. I guess the only place that I can speak from is the one that that I live and that's the one through through Christ, because I think we all have to understand that we are, we are folk, we are people, and we are flawed, like deeply flawed folks, where no one, not not one of us is perfect, so we're all going to have drama, we're all going to have baggage, we all have past, we all have something that's not going to be, you know, the the same as the other person, because we're all just individual and different, but to Look past the look. Don't focus on those things, but focus on the things that bind you together. Yes, you're gonna have some struggles. Yes, it's gonna be you know kind of you know like okay, I do it like this. You don't have to do this. And there's a learning curve. There is a learning curve at the beginning because I was yeah. super independent when we first got married. He come home and I'd have everything handled. And it's like, uh, you know, I'm married now. You don't have to do things on your own. It's like, oh yeah, you know, you're right. Hey, yeah. Ask me now baby can you do can you do can you do can you do you know so it it, you to to hang in there to get past those things the second thing is to always 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 date date make that a priority whether it's once a month whether it's every two weeks whether it's once a quarter however your schedule is do it doesn't have to be this elaborate dinner you should do that though it could be something simple as having a picnic in the backyard. Yeah. Or like we do now sometimes because, you know, with COVID, we were doing quarantine date nights because, you know, I got to have my date nights. So keep dating. Do all of those things that you did in the beginning that were fun, that were, you know, wonderful, had you laughing and giggling and always smiling. Those little text messages, those little phone calls, those little notes or cards or little flowers or whatever. Keep doing that and the last thing don't ever put your head to pillow before y'all straighten out something don't go to bed mad just don't do it powerful powerful thank you so much one more one more get around some folks with the same thought process yeah and let and keep other folk out your business 
important. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. That's some powerful advice, and I know it's going to bless somebody's life. Again, thank you so much. So. For thank time you, sis. Thank you really so much for inviting this. me. You know, you my girl. Yes, honey, you are yes. my sis. <laughs> um, give us some contact information, and then I'm going to let you go. I know we can't reach you on Facebook, but do you have a website? Yes, my website is CherylLister.com, S-H-E-R-Y-L-L-I-S-T-E-R.com. You can find me on Instagram at Cheryl Lister, Twitter at Cheryl Lister, not on Twitter quite as much, but Instagram and Facebook. You can either find me at Cheryl Lister or author Cheryl Lister is my author page. So yeah, and there I am. And if you want to send me an email, it's just Cheryl Lister at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. Any questions right. about books or anything else? Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for so having me, sis. For spending time with me tonight. And uh, I'm definitely going to have to reach out to you because I need to get caught up on some books. That's what I say, girl. Go on, send me a message. I'll tell me what you need. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you so much, Cheryl. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you. All right. Peace and blessings.